Hello, everyone, and good morning. And uh, to everyone out there, uh, welcome to WikiTree Day. Um, I'm excited to uh, you know, welcome everyone to this panel on the power of collaborat collaborative genealogy um, with a focus on technology. And um, it's super. We've got, we've got a nice full panel today. And uh, so uh, um, I'm just going to let people go around the room and introduce themselves. My name is Greg Clark. I'm a WikiTree member. Um, a retired high school math and computer science teacher, uh, got into Wikitree five years ago and I've developed some apps with it and um, I really enjoyed uh, working through Oktoberfest with the, this crew here. So, Alesh, over to you. Hi, I'm Alesh, uh, I'm from Slovenia. Um, I, I, uh, I program uh, mainly, uh, we are developing a geographic information system and uh, we started a few years ago with wikitree data to analyze it uh, in so we we kind of tested our software with a lot of uh, uh, data so and uh, that uh, resulted in wikitree plus section of wikitree that where we uh, do a lot of data analysis and so on Next. I am uh, Brian Casey. I'm the main programmer for Wikitree. Okay, if that's all, I am um, Michal Vashu. I am from Czech Republic and uh, I currently work at Cessna, a Czech company that is similar to Google, but in a local um, territory only for Czech Republic. Well, we have some uh, offshore and uh, abroad uh, business, but mainly our business is in Czech Republic. And uh, as my job is mainly server side uh, thing uh, for streaming uh, platform. So, oh, something is wrong. <laughs> uh, do you guys see me? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah. Okay, it's blinking on my side, but okay, never mind. <laughs> so I, I'll pass the word to Kay, I think. Go ahead, Kay. Um, I got a degree in geography with a minor in computer science and uh, spent 35 years as a software engineer, mostly in research and development, mostly for the US government. And after I retired, uh, caught up on some reading and started playing with genealogy. And I was searching for sources for some of my ancestors and I found Wikitree. And I kind of got sucked into Wikitree and I was looking and it's like some of the um, profiles didn't have really good sources on them, but they weren't marked on source. So I ended up trying to write some code to see if I could find unsourced profiles that weren't marked. And, that's where BioCheck came from, and now it's uh, in the browser. Um, so that's me. I'm a cartographer. I can tell you where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Elesh and I have something in common. <laughs> Shemek. Okay. Hello. Uh, so I'm Shemek. I'm from Poland, and I'm a professional software developer. And uh, uh, I'm an amateur genealogist, so I've been involved in like gene genealogy and genealogy software for like almost 20 years, but like always as a hobby, some, somewhere in the background, uh, much of it in open source. So I, I have contributed to uh, an application called Genealogy J, uh, which is no, no longer uh, maintained, but like you can find Ancestries, which is like... Uh, uh, an ancestor of that of that project. Uh, most re mo more recently, I developed Topola, which is uh, uh, like a visualization application. Obviously, works uh, great with Wikitree, uh, but not only. Like it works with Gramps as an add-on. Uh, it works with like any uh, JetCom file, so you can load any data in there. Um, and here in the uh, <clears throat> uh, Hectoberfest. Uh, uh, I've been uh, joining uh, a bit the, the projects, uh, especially the, uh, the extension. Um, I haven't developed a feature yet, uh, 
but I've been trying to like nudge the project a bit, like uh, the structure of the project with testing. Like, like it, it's it's a big project, so uh, trying to to uh, see it uh, <clears throat> uh, as it should be uh, done, like in an engineering uh, uh, way. Um, yeah, and thank you for inviting me. Like, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Good to have you. Hey. And also another first time we're joining us is Jeff. Pardon me for coughing then. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm Jeff. Um, I come from northwest of England, in a little blighty. Um, I've been a programmer for all my life, um, mostly on statistical process control, which is a horrible thing. If you can avoid ever getting into it, do so. Um, I uh, started family tree, family history things when I was at school, but uh, it wasn't until I came across Ancestry that I started looking at it in earnest, very quickly discovered that you can't trust the hints. Um, backtracked a long way through uh, masses of stuff that I'd added which shouldn't have been added, and I came across Wikitree in a magazine, a genealogy magazine. I can't remember which one it was. I used to pick up quite a few. Um, and I think I joined 2019. Um, I immediately started off on a wrong foot by uploading a large JEDCOM, which I'm still working through, trying to get rid of all the dross that it got along with it. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I found the API and uh, was overjoyed to find a project, programming project. Even more overjoyed when Hacktoberfest came along. Because <laughs> uh, that gave me a direction to follow for, for programming. And as you will see later, I got into doing the, 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 the um, uh, family group view, which is uh, quite, a, quite a nice um quite a nice implementation i think i might be bragging there <laughs> over to chris thanks jeff uh thanks everybody for being here uh i'm chris witten i'm the founder of wikitree um but but that sounds better than it is because brian casey has been making me look good for 25 years through various projects and uh I am the least technical person here. Um, so I think I'm gonna try to be quiet through most of this and, uh, and just be here if you need me. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us, Chris. This is, uh, for those who haven't been following since uh, eight in the morning, this is Chris's third panel in a row. So, you know, uh, uh, you're totally welcome to just sort of uh, <laughs> sit back and, and enjoy this one. but. You know, jump in if there's anything you want to uh, add to or whatever. So that's great. Um, so we're going to talk about, I mean, the way I sort of had envisioned the, the panel going is sort of a past, present, future. So you just heard about our past and, and where we all came from and what we've sort of done. Um, so I think right now what we want to do is we want to celebrate the present and um, the amazing project, the Hacktoberfest project that we just finished officially. Um, I say it officially because Hacktoberfest is, of course, for the month of October. Um, but I don't know if there's anyone in the room here who has actually totally finished the piece that they started. I know um, I had three three uh, views in the dynamic tree myself, none of which are at the stage where I, I would say that they're complete. Um, so it's the gift that keeps on giving, I think. And uh, thanks, Chris, for uh, hooking us all onto that. <laughs> um, but uh, the neat thing about the project, um, for those who are uh, hearing about this for the first time, who may not have been part of um, the project or haven't didn't watch the, the live cast, is um, uh, so we there were, have been standalone apps um, because the the API existed, as as Jeff mentioned, and uh, a number of us have written standalone apps, like I had done a fan chart app, um, uh, and it's connected on it was connected on WikiTree. But um, you had to go to a family tree page to, to a family tree and tools page to get to it. Um, uh, so it wasn't immediately obvious how, how to get to it for some, for especially for new people. Um, 
And the great thing about the Hacktoberfest project is that now all of those views are incorporated in one place, which is an essential menu that's accessible from every page on Wikitree. And um, so uh, not only did individual people um, able to program that, but we program them together um, so that, and other people have helped, like um, many of the people that you see here helped me with various pieces of the work that I've done. And I've been contributing my two cents worth with them. And I've never worked with fellow programmers on Wikitree uh, like I have this past month. Um, that collaboration um, is amazing. And uh, it's something that's uh, just personally fulfilling. But I think they, it also, when you see the, pro the, the product, um, I think you'll also agree that there's some great stuff there. So I'm going to take you, um, there were two aspects to it. So the one is the dynamic, dynamic tree, which is basically different views or ways of uh, displaying the information that's in your family tree. Um, and then the second part are browser extensions, which are ways that extend the functionality of the Wikitree page or profile that you're working on. And um, so what I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen right now and take you through some of those, uh, those views. And I'm gonna invite other members who have worked on various of those various views um, to share if they're here. Um, we I noticed in the chat, Steve Harris, who worked on uh, the calendar view and the timeline view, and also did some other work with the, the browser extension and in the back end, um, isn't available to be with us online. He's traveling right now. So um, we're sorry that we're missing you, Steve, but um, thank you for your work. And um, anyway, so let me just do that. So this is the GitHub page, which is basically the, the place where all of the code ends up. Um, so this may not mean anything to you, but uh, the, these files are where it run all the deep magic that you're going to see. And so the very first view, um, and if you if you look, um, you see there's actually 10 now. It started off with a single one, the dynamic tree, which is this one here that, that Brian put together. And basically, you have a, a central person in the middle, and you see his, to the right, you see his parents. Uh, and you can extend that and see the great the grandparents, and then going the opposite direction, you can extend and see children, if there were children there. And uh, I guess I picked someone who didn't have children profiles in Wikitree. That wasn't so good. Now, to get to that, if you want to get to that place, um, oh, you can see I've got dark mode <laughs> enabled here. So maybe I should change turn dark mode off. Uh, let me just uh, turn off dark mode. OK. And now reload that page. Okay, so to get to the dynamic tree from any from any page in Wikitree, you just go to. Let me just zoom in here. You go to your uh, profile menu, which is the one that starts with your name and uh, your Wikitree ID, and you go down to dynamic tree, and then it'll load it up. And what it'll do is it'll actually load up the one that you've been on most recently. Uh, it keeps track of that memory in the in the browser. So. Not surprisingly to some fan chart was the last one I was on. <laughs> but let's go back to this one here. So there's the, the dynamic tree that Brian started with. Um, Brian, you've done uh, three of these, I believe, the dynamic and the on and toffel list um, and the surnames. Do you want to talk about those or? Sure. So the, uh, you know, the dynamic tree was just, uh, it was it started as a sketch to try to provide a an interactive way of exploring you know a family tree you know a little bit visually with you know being able to open up the different branches and, and kind of see how the different people uh, relate um i'm not the only one that worked on the code uh, uh jamie is another uh, member of the wiki tree team has done a bunch of work on it and other people have contributed to uh this as both as part of uh hacktoberfest and before um but you know, with this project, the goal was both to make this tree sort of more easily available and to have an example of code that works with the Wikitree API that other people could then look at and say, oh, okay, I can make a view that does something completely differently. Or, you know, I want to enhance this view uh, to, you know, have additional features. And uh, the other ones were uh, pages that we had on Wikitree. 
uh, that were sort of separate and, and handled on, on the server. And the idea is to have this dynamic tree set of views be a central place where a lot of different things can be seen in different ways and where the community can be extended beyond uh, people that are just using Wikitree to people that want to enhance it. And so I just, uh, again, using the API, reproduced this, this uh, generational list of people uh, within the view system of the dynamic tree app. Mm -hmm. And there's the surname ones. Yeah. Yep. Great. Yeah. Very nice. And you know what I did start, I started with yours. I took this code uh, when I first started creating the fan chart view um, because I thought, well, it's bringing in the same people that I need but I have to figure out now how to take it from a basically a linear sort of rectangular format to, some, to something circular and whatnot. And then uh, at one point I had the epiphany of how to, how to make that change, but you know, the core of what, of what mine does is actually based on the stuff that you've done. So thank you for that, Brian, because <laughs> that gave me a leg up to get started. Um, and we should say Brian was sort of the spearhead of the dynamic tree um, team. So he's done a lot of work in the background, getting things set up like this one and um, and approving and merging all the codes so that it all fits together. Um, and I don't know how many times you had to resolve conflicts. Hopefully not too many, but. It was actually pretty smooth. One of the nice setups is that the views are largely independent. And so when a new view was built, you know, even if it was a little bit of a draft form, you know, we could merge that in so everybody could see it, could point out uh, suggestions for changes and things like that without it necessarily disturbing the other views that were in place. Uh, so uh, it, it's so far, you know, been, been pretty smooth. It's been a nice collaboration. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, thanks for your, your leadership there. Okay, so, um... I've got a, so I've done three views and I'm just going to quickly go through, uh, whip through these because I, I had talked about them and, and demonstrated them in, in a lot of detail in a previous Hacktoberfest live cast. And uh, maybe we can, if we have access to the show notes, we can put links to some of those, uh, to those live casts uh, as well. So people can view that. Um, I'm also doing a presentation at four later this afternoon um, where I'm giving a view of some of the apps I've done. So. I will probably cover that uh, in there as well. But basically the Ancestor Webs view, which is this one here, um, shows you the pedigree and you can change this from just initials to full names, but just to keep it tight, uh, my I start off with just initials so it, it fits, everything fits on a screen a little better. And there's a traditional pedigree um, going out, um, but if you, um, I've got a unique view. So what that does is that, shows you uh so an ancestor only appears once and if they appear twice because of um uh, a collapse in the pedagogy or endogamy um you see them connected like so exact so these two here um alessio and caterina had a, a son For fortunato who had um two children which which were uh, ancestors of anna so you can see that visually there and which you'll end up getting. Uh, so here is a, a more complicated one. So this is actually one of my, this is my, my grandfather's uh, web. And you can see being French Canadian, there's a lot of repeat ancestors once you go back in time and you can see all of that. And if I went back another generation, it would be just um, a real rat's nest almost. <laughs> but one of the um, options is you can actually see, pick a single ancestor and see the multiple paths that take you down to um, to Joseph from Marie Madeleine. So that's that's the uh, the bottom line for the ancestor web. Uh, the family anniversaries. Uh, so this is the uh, is doo -doo -doo -doo. who was this? This was this is uh, Steve Harris's calendar view. Um, and basically what that one does um, uh, was, Brian, did you want to talk about this one? Because I think you might have worked with Steve on this. 
Sure. So the idea behind this one is to take the uh, the family members, the people that are on your watch list, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, gather them up and then put uh, the various uh, anniversaries, births, deaths, things like that uh, in calendar order. So you can, you know, sort of see, you know, uh, uh, what happened on this day in history kind of a thing for your family history. So there is all of the November 5th dates. So I have some marriages to celebrate, lots of marriages. Some, someone was born on this day in history. Look at that. There should be some, and there's, oh, I don't, is it possible? No, no deaths on that date <laughs> in mine. Yeah. And then the family group sheet is the next one in the list. And uh, that would be, that's yours, right, yeah. Jeff? Yes, that will be me. Uh, the family group sheet, it's, it's a, a nice nice view, uh, I think. Um, if you have multiple marriages, then each set of uh, couples, uh, each, each uh, marriage is represented by a separate set of uh, images. Uh, so if, if you switch to Tudor 4, for example. Okay. That's Henry VIII. Yeah. King, King of England. Uh, and he had, of course, six wives. Oh, my. As you scroll down, you will see that there are six separate marriages being viewed there. Okay. Uh, and it picks out the individual offspring for each. That's marriage. nice. Uh, further, further to that, if you do a print from this, it makes sure that each each family stays on a single page. Um, <clears throat> well, that's very clever. That that's that's not uh, inconsequential. <laughs> that's <Yeah. laughs> smart. As far as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. There's still still things to do on that, but uh, it, it's it's operable as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, at the bottom there, you've just got a list of the children uh, in total of Henry. So these are all the children from so all those the are all the children, including the ones which are offspring outside of the marriages. Oh, so are there some here that? So, don't yeah, have a, a mother there are there are only nine listed in the marriages and there are 10 listed at the bottom Ooh. i forget now which one is the odd one out okay okay you'll see you'll see the little ding bat next to each name which will allow you to switch view to that family oh i picked up a, 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 the wrong one because <laughs> <laughs> apparently henry does not oh right because he Past, yeah, he only yeah. 22 days old. So, uh, yeah. many of the offspring of Henry VIII died in infancy. Right, right, of course. Uh, what about Elizabeth Tudor? Yes, she she lasted a while. She lasted a while, but no offspring. No right. offspring. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing very well in picking examples, am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's neat. I, I like I like how that. Uh, allows you to, to jump back and forth to yeah. um and i think that's something that brian set up on the original yeah. um the original one yeah. if you that if that, you... that that was uh elizabeth tudor was uh, elizabeth the first that's right yes yes yeah. if, as, if had... as you know we've just lost elizabeth the second so right yes if i had if i had thought that through before i clicked i would have realized yes <laughs> it, it, it may be a while before we get a third it may be a while before we get a, a queen elizabeth the third yes Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Very nice. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and then the family timeline, that's also one of Steve's. And did you work with this, uh, Brian, did you work with Steve on this one? Uh, only tangentially, uh, you know, mostly just mer merging it in. Uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a similar set of data, right? It's uh, anniversaries of births and deaths and things like that. But for... Uh, instead of taking the data from your watch list from your whole family and listing all of them it's focusing on one profile 
and looking at sort of the, the history related to that person. And so you can see that, yeah, that's the one highlighted. That's the, the profile that you're viewing. And you can see the, the, uh, the siblings and the parents and, and spouses and children and, and their, uh, uh, their lifespans uh, relative to the, the center profile there. Uh, and there may be some additional data in there that I don't remember as well. I, 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 don't, uh, I don't recall all the details of what's available in that view, but that's the essential core of it. Mm -hmm. And if you click on, so if I click on William's son, William, they're very original in that family, uh, <laughs> then it'll rechange it and make him the, the primary person, right? And so you could actually yep. jump down, jump around in time and just go up and back and forth and whatnot like that. Yeah, that's something that uh, I think is still a work in progress. For most of the views, uh, we want it to be able to, you know, because you're showing a lot of other profiles. And so to sort of recenter and, and focus the view on that individual profile is mm -hmm. something that the code supports, but not all of the views have implemented. And we mm -hmm. also, I think, in a lot of cases, want to be able to jump from one view to the next. For example, from William Douglas there to the fan chart view that you've created for that profile. Right. And, you know, it's a it's a little bit of a user interface thing because there's so many views and they're growing. And so we have we don't want to clutter it up too much. Uh, but the 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 linking is there to be able to jump from one view to the next uh for the different profiles uh right. so we just need to you know work on implementing that uh both in the the views themselves and in a way that doesn't you know make the the views unusable because of all of the 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 links and icons in them but right uh, yeah. so great of course you can always scroll up to the top and just select a different view and, and hit go and that works too that's right yeah that would do that that's great. And I mean, we've had a, uh, some initial discussions about, you know, we've got 10 in the list now. When we get when we have 20 in the list, we're going to we're probably going to want some other type of organizer or picker or something like that. But um, that, that's an issue under discussion already. Uh, I know. You know, to I, know. Ha have that, <laughs> I just have I thought I'd share be a little with better the, with the, the viewers that, you know, we're already thinking of thinking, you know, in the future of that sort of stuff. And I don't know. If, we haven't landed on a, an answer for that yet. But I really like this um, this view because it being able to see, you know, visually, you know, lifespans and how they overlap and whatnot is is very cool. I know a lot um, a lot of people like that. Um, then we have the fan chart, um, which some many of you are probably familiar with, and the most recent thing that I've added to that was some. Uh, settings so you can change some of the settings there's still some settings from the original standalone app which is still working by the way um which haven't made it here yet but um will be uh transported shortly into that um but uh, uh and again you can you can go up and down the generations uh one of the th changes i did make just this week is a better way of adding the photos the folks <laughs> if you tried to add photos to generation six and seven before they looked really ugly and sort of overtook things. And now they're they're a little bit better now, but that's the biggest change in the fan chart. Um, and the other view, the third view that I had worked on was this uh, fractal tree. And so if you see from, from the middle there, there's me and my two biological parents. I hit plus to add another generation and there's their parents. And then two more and you get, the, and it grows out and it's a fractal because the the, pattern just repeats over and over again. You know, the parents are added either horizontally or vertically, depending on which, and it just grows and grows. And another uh, another word for this type of tree is the H tree because it makes it's a giant H. So there's kind of cool things there. And because it's the exact same uh, data that the fan chart is, the, um, the settings, uh, you can do everything with this one that you can with the fan chart. Enough said about that. Printer friendly view is the one by Michal. Wanna... Yeah, thanks. Uh, here I have to go uh, <laughs> the old one uh, that is implemented by some someone else. Uh, I, I believe Chris or Brian, or I don't know. And uh, basically, uh, I took it and re implemented it in a new view. And why that? Because uh, I've done some work on the core. And uh, I've tried to prove that it, it works as, as expected. Um, I've tried to simplify um, 
adding new views into the car. And uh, this was my um, ha hamster to make experiments. <laughs> um, but basically, I've also implemented some basic sharing uh, functionality. Um, when you look at uh, the URL address, there are um, hash or um, and at the end there is hash and Clarky one one oh 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 seven ampersand view equals printer friendly. And that means that it's profile uh, for Clarky uh, and uh, view is printer friendly. You can change that for some other view and it will switch to another view. It's basically the same functionality as you do with the select box. And uh, oh, you, you must leave the view here. Ah, okay, there we go. There uh, and basically uh, you can switch that uh, from um, uh, other view we, we are code or you can share this URL to someone else to show the view you want with the selected profile. Uh, what else? <laughs> I'm basically trying not to work on views, but rather on the core and to unify the view and simplify things. But uh, I didn't have so much time, so uh, and there is a lot of things to discuss and to make some consensus uh, with others because my expectations doesn't um, aren't the same as expect expectations of other people. So there is a lot, lots of things to discuss and. Um, uh, that's all for now, I think. <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you, Michal. Um, I just want to jump yeah. in real quick and just future uh, plans for future plans for the view are some basic settings to uh, ch change date format uh, per user and maybe some uh, background or backdrop uh, of the fo page format. So you can see when you print if the page content fits into the page, and uh, I think it could be uh, beneficial for the print view. Okay, that's all <laughs> now. <laughs> Finally, Brian. Yeah, I just wanted to say real quickly that I think that uh, this uh, view uh, is a great example of what we wanted to do with the dynamic tree project uh, and Hacktoberfest because that we have a version of this uh, on WikiTree. And what, what's happened is, is by pulling that into the dynamic tree project, the view is better. Uh, Mikhail did a great job of, of uh, making it uh, cleaner. Uh, I think the data, the, the, the page just works better. Uh, and it's now available in the open source project. So not only his improvements are there, but anybody else can come along and they can tweak it and improve it further or use it as a launch pad for a whole other view. And you mix that in with the improvements that he made to the core part of uh, the dynamic tree. And I think it just was a, a, a really great contribution to move the whole thing forward uh, that other people are going to be able to uh, step forward uh, with on their own too. So it's just, you know, it, it's uh, a relatively straightforward view compared to some of the uh, the flashier ones, but I think it's a great example of, of evolving WikiTree and the data that it has uh, uh, forward in a, in a collaborative way that, that really it, it ex expands what can be done in the future. And so thank no, you for thanks. all the work that you did on that. Yeah. Uh, thanks for kind words. <laughs> yeah. The other um, the other thing that Michael br brought up is you know being in discussion and uh, that's one of the things because we've been collaborating so much and discussing and everyone has their own way of programming um, even something as simple as <laughs> uh, determining you know standards for file naming and number of spaces and whatnot but um, you know people have different uh, ideas things that other others are like like I had not never thought about or ways of approaching a problem that solves it in a better way that's easier to go forward. Um, all of that stuff uh, isn't stuff that you see um, in the end product, but it's uh, um, integral to the whole thing working together. So um, 
thanks for all those who take part in, in that that piece of it. Um, and let me think. I, are we at the the last one, the surnames we already ta uh, demonstrated that, and that is the end of the dynamic views. So I think I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Kay, who is going to take us through a a tour of the browser extensions and the part that she has done, as well as I think some of the work from Ian and Rob. Uh, a comment from the comments for oh, okay. Brian and Chris to make note of, because this can like crunch us down to nothing. Uh -oh. uh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to find out on your watch list who you're not related to? Hmm. Yeah. That came out of the comments. Give me a list of folks I'm not related to. You know, similar, give me a list of folks that I'm on the trusted list for, but I'm not the manager for. That's a related one. Uh, okay, I guess I got to figure out how to share my screen. <laughs> hey, Kay, if yeah. I could interrupt for one second to comment on that. Um, something like that, I think, is completely possible because of Alesha's code now. Mm -hmm. Like what? Years ago, that would have been really difficult for us in, in the way that our database is structured. But um, but now that we have Alesha's connection finder, like that's just so much faster. Right, Brian? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it uh, would be a relatively straightforward thing to do that intersection because we can get a who am I related to uh, pretty quickly uh, mm -hmm. with with the, the pre-calculated connections that uh, are, are in the connection finder. It it uh, you know, it, it holds all of that in, in memory in a way that we don't have to walk very slowly through the database uh, for every every check. So uh, that's, I think, doable, you know, yeah. put, it, put it put it in the queue of, of, of ideas for sure. Right. Like if, if Jamie's listening to this, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, she, she'll get it on the list and if we don't like get it in G to G to remind us and it'll get yeah. done eventually. Cause that's a great idea. Uh, okay. If you hit the present button at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Okay. So while you're getting there, um, Jamie, Jamie Nelson's part of our, part of the team and she can't be here this morning, but we should give a huge shout out for her for all the work that she's done. Um, and she, sh she's been sort of the primary shepherd of the browser extension, I believe, but she's had her hand in, Everything is right. like Brian. <laughs> is my screen showing up? Uh, it will as soon as one of us clicks it there. Okay. Whoopsie. Oop. Went away. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> All right. Is it sharing now? Yes, it is. It's sharing now. Yeah. Speaking of Jamie, one of the things that she's done is she went to the, she updated the find apps menu so that there you can find links to dynamic tree views in the browser extension. And the browser extension uh, has help. It's a work in progress, a collaborative work in progress, but there is help for the browser extension. Uh, now I'm using Firefox. I'm showing you stuff on open source because I'm running Linux, which is open source. Uh, Firefox is open source. Uh, so I've got the browser extension version 102. I don't need to show you my open source uh, email client or uh, manager. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me go to the browser and start with Charles Krauss. I'm going to edit this guy. Now, a couple things you can see here is the clipboard. I haven't played with it, but you can put stuff on the clipboard, take it back and forth to different places. Ian did that. It came from B, Ian's extension, and there's also notes. Another thing that shows up is how many degrees you are from the profile that you're looking at. So here's Charles. Um, Charles needs some work. He's an orphan. Um, Alesh helped let me find people born in 1868 that might need work. If I go into the edit mode for Charles, you will see that he's got 
Oh, I guess, I guess those are, I failed kindergarten. I can't read icons. Um, but down here at the bottom, there's no suggestions for this profile, but you can see he's been biochecked that he might be missing references and he might be unsourced. Now, if I go down here and I add something like uh, Ancestry and Family Search as my source, and I go back down and, yeah, you know, must be the wrong one. Maybe it was... Uh, Maybe it was family search and ancestry. Needs a space in between. That's not showing up. Um, even when I click on save draft, it's not showing up. Um, anyway, we're going to fix this guy. We're going to we're going to give him some references tag. He's still. Obviously came in from a JEDCOM, uh, but he doesn't have the JEDCOM name in him. So he wouldn't be found on that search. Now, if we go search for Charles, and I have the uh, Wikitree Sorcerer installed, so I've already searched. It's not integrated with the browser, but it's, it's also open source. I can find Charles, and I can find his source in 1900 with his wife Alice and his daughters May and Gertrude, which matches what he's got here, Maybell and Gertrude, and his source that was not a source that said, it's the 1900 census, but I have no idea where it is. But I can add that as a source. And then I can go down here, and if I go over the save draft, it has sources. So we'll quit in case we want to demo this again. Uh, that's the thing about these. Now, if we go to this guy, Frederick. Here you'll see he, he's 15 degrees, and he's actually related to me. It's just a random profile that I picked. And if you click more, you can see the common ancestors. That came into the browser extension from B. Uh, he, uh, if we go into him... If he showed up in a, a biotech report of some problem with him, uh, the only problem he's got is that he's missing his references tag. Uh, so if we put, stop jumping on me, if we put a references tag in, uh, then you'll see he appears to have sources. And if you wonder how I typed references so quickly, <laughs> yes, <laughs> without going over here, I'll stop bouncing on how to add sources. I have an auto text expander installed in my browser. Uh, uh, so for key things like that. Now here's a guy, he's 17 degrees and uh, he's missing a bunch of stuff. If we go into him in edit mode, we'll see that uh, he doesn't have a, any headings at all. And that's what the bio check is telling us there. Mary is interesting. Uh, Mary came from a JEDCOM. And so with Mary, when we go into her profile, uh, we can use the AGC extension to clean up this profile. This is like Best thing since sliced bread. Down here, you'll see it's got a line between sources and references. She's undated, so she's got suggestions. Uh, but if we say, okay, let's clean her up. Okay, now she's clean. She's tagged unsourced. Uh, and our check results show she looks clean. She still doesn't have any sources. So probably before I left her, I would uh, try and say, uh, she's probably unsourced in New York. Un she's undated. She could probably be dated given the location and the date, but we're going to leave her for future demos. Uh, and Florabell, similarly, is another JEDCOM. If we look at her, and down at the bottom, we'll see she's she's got 
she looks like she's got sources if you just look at the biography and that's probably because some lines are being found in there but if we aid you see her if we got some notes from the external profile agc didn't know what to do with that and it said well it might be something of value let me leave it in there so that you can look at it and that's one of the things you need to do with both agc and biochat when they make changes in a profile you need to look at those and make sure that the changes are really correct in what you want uh, sometimes biochat that's why it says it's maybe unsourced because it might, there might be text in the biography that says in 1900, he was uh, living in uh, blah, 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 Iowa. And that's enough information to find this ambiguous or vague 1900 census. But just 1900 census is too vague. Um, so I think... Uh, that covers, I don't know why this source didn't show up. Ancestry and Family Search. I have seen that as a source in profiles. I do not understand why uh, uh, it didn't show up. Um, and I think I'm going to stop sharing uh, somewhere here. I can find it. Click to control. Uh, Stop screen. Okay. There you go. Thanks, Kay. That's a lot. That's a lot that you, you shared in there. Yeah. Um, very cool. And all those drafts that you saved, one of the options in the extension now is to be able to pull up and view those drafts too, right? Yeah. Hopefully I got rid of them all. Oh. <laughs> That's the thing with demoing biocheck or right. ATC. You fix it and you can't go Once back. Once you change it, you can't use that profile anymore. <laughs> That's right. It's been That's fixed. Right. Okay. Alesh, did you want to demo some of the stuff that you've done in, in uh, mm -hmm. an extension? Okay. Just uh, just quickly. <laughs> I know that's hard to say because you've done so much. Um, okay, and, quickly. So, uh, and, you know, <laughs> that's an oxymoron, isn't it? In the very first Hacktoberfest live cast, Alesh took over pretty much the entire show, demonstrating only some of the features of his um, Wikitree Plus extension that he's moved into the official Wikitree browser extension. So again, we'll put a link to that so you can view the whole thing in its beauty. But um, unless you want to highlight- Let's, let's show the most important ones. That's that exactly. I think, I think will be uh, useful to most Wikitreeers. So first one is add any template. So you can, uh, you have a way to add a template. So we can add, I don't know, let's say uh, England. Uh, so we have England uh, project and then England challenge. There are many uh, templates for England. Let's stay with uh, England sticker one. And uh, we then get the uh, uh, edit box where we can, we have some uh, instructions on the sticker from the web page and we can also enter all the parameters of the stickers that are defined here. We can, for instance, see uh, the sticker, this is the help page for the sticker with all the description, parameters, examples, and uh, but the same can be done here and you just select, so let's say Derbyshire and update changes and then it inserts the stickers where the cur cursor was. You can also move it around wherever you want. Mm and uh, once the, you have a template on a uh, on a uh, edit page you can also go into e edit template where you get the same uh, thing and you can also add some texts update changes and it updates the stickers uh, the sticker it knows about all the parameters that are <coughs> allowed for each sticker <coughs> you can also get the uh, here on question mark, if you hover on it, it uh, shows you a description of that stick uh, the, of that parameter. So it's uh, really uh, easy to use uh, for uh, things that you're not familiar with. Mm, so this is about templates. Um, 
then uh, okay i have also uh, some possibility to paste sources where you can paste url or citation from other major sites the, and this ref, ref, reformat it to the uh, wiki tree uh, look um then also i added automated corrections this does all you probably most of you probably saw that edit bot changed something on the page like uh, we have a set of changes that we do on every profile that edit bot uh, edits and those uh, changes are also implemented here so it automatically corrects old urls from uh, ancestry that no longer works and so um, remove some uh, those sound lines and so on. Uh, it also for, uh, corrects uh, spaces like multiple or uh, wrong use of parameter parentheses and so on. So this is if you want to perform a edit both section on a profile, you can and then those links would work. Um, this is mostly what was in Wikitree Plus before, um, and now uh, lately, I think after the release, I also add um, cemetery picker. So you can add the cemetery co category. Uh, it is slightly different than the built-in one, where you can enter, I, I don't know, let's say Oak Hill, and we will get first 20 uh categories that match oak hill now if we go with the cemetery picker oak now it searches all the uh, category cemetery uh, this one is limited to cemetery categories and uh, you get all that have oak hill in the name but you also get this one that doesn't have it but you and you get it because if you hover on it you will see the hint and there you see it is in this category has uh, aka the, also known as defined oak hill cemetery so okay and if we we can also you can add other main so oak hill main and uh, th this one is the one we are looking for and it just adds the category where did it go yeah where did it go <laughs> uh, uh, at the beginning at the at the okay where it should be <laughs> oh okay <laughs> hello of course okay. <laughs> so um because categories is... always go at the top but yeah. stickers can go anywhere is that the way it works uh, yes, sticker should be in the next in uh, uh, next to the biography, in the bi within the biography in the section that it concerns. So mm -hmm. uh, now, if we check this category on um, okay. <laughs> this is another uh, goodie from uh, the extension that Ian did or I'm not sure who you can uh, here in uh, you can jump to the category and see if that's the correct the one that you are looking for so that image there now if you check this category that we just added so it has uh, a dish also known as defined and you can also search by the location so uh, location is not always in the category name or uh, you don't have the um, the uh, county is missing so um, uh, you can, but in uh, this uh, category you, uh, here you can uh, write um, on a category cemetery picker you can also write the locations and uh, so on so you just it works similarly to other searches and here you, and on hint you see why there's so there's gonna be a, a lot there for you. <laughs> great thank you yeah. so that's great that's so it. um thanks Alesh. i'm, I'm looking mm -hmm. at the time we only have a few minutes left so i do yeah. want to get to my final question but um you mentioned ian and uh so ian bicall and rob pavey have also been instrumental in working on parts of the extension and so i'd like to um give a shout out to them for for their work and um, Brian or Brian 
Chris, Kay, can you think of other names of other people that we should also thank for all the work they've done through October, October 5th that I haven't acknowledged? So much behind the scenes collaboration. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, there have been a few other people that have contributed to the dynamic tree. Uh, Riel, I think, is is one of their names. Right. Um, trying to think through. Uh, one nice thing about it being open source is you can go to GitHub and now that's not everybody because that's only people that have uh, you know committed or, or posted an actual issue and there's discussion on the email group and other things where collaboration happens as well but uh, mm -hmm. there are I'm, I'm sure other people that I've forgotten but that's at least one name that, that comes to mind <laughs> yeah. someone plus the community the community yeah, really testing and giving us feedback yes yes we've had lots of, of testers and feedback so that was great yeah so my final question for you is about the future what do you uh in a quick before before anyone gives us the hook and uh, hauls us off the stage um give, give me your prediction of what you see in terms of wikitree and technology and where we're going to be in say five years or ten years down the road or, or whatever so just jump in well i uh just very quickly, I think that the the both the extension and the dynamic tree are off to a really good start, and I think they're going to continue to evolve in the same way that the WikiTree site has, where the more people that are involved in in building it, the better it gets, and the, and the more it goes forward. And you know, we have some improvements on the API side of things uh, coming in, hopefully, the relatively near term that I think will make a number of uh views uh easier to build uh because of the data that uh will be easier to grab uh and so we'll you know continue to just push that forward uh, and hopefully you know lots of fun new uh ways of interacting with the the genealogy data if i could add to what brian just said um what was so fantastic to me to watch about hectoberfest not just the the what was produced i mean what was produced was amazing but the way in which it was produced to me was just as amazing like it this group here and the others we named were so collaborative um i didn't see a single conflict of note i you know i mean i i honestly did not even see like anything that got heated everything was worked through in an incredible way and a lot of you guys have also you know, incorporated what has come from others in the community in such a great way um, that I think that's the most promising part of all of this is that, you know, this really will be something by the community for the community. You know, it's, it, it will be what Brian said about Wikitree's organic development, but times a hundred. Thanks, Chris. Um, may, I, may I have a question? Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, there are some atomic things like uh, dates and locations, names, and so on. But uh, there is still one big chunk of text. It's pure text. Oh, actually, too. It's bio and sources. And uh, Alash is doing a really great job to parse that and uh, fetch information from that. But uh, are there any plans to move from that old uh, Wikimedia style to some more atomic way? Like, because uh those things atomic things we, are, we can use uh, we are I, api but uh bio or uh, sources not uh even sources uh when we change one source uh, and then we must change the same source uh, for three four five times where it's the same uh, for example for census or i don't know for ch childbirth it's same source, but we must change it every time. Uh, so if uh, it would be uh, shared between people, it, it would be better in my opinion. But are, are there so, any plans for that? Mikhail, if, if I could answer some of that, um, I know that we only have a few seconds left, but what makes some of that difficult is that the editing, um, we need to exist in one collaborative environment. Everybody who's using every tool like needs to work together so in some ways it's a lot easier to um to let viewers uh, tools that access and view genealogy um evolve faster than the tools for editing and changing genealogy because we know that the editing and the changing needs to be broadly collaborative like it, it, really everybody who uses wikitree 
needs to be on the same page about these things. So if they're seeing very different things, um, that calls into question a lot of things about the style rules, about our you know means of collaboration and how we work through conflicts. And so you know we need to slow that down just a little bit. I, there's a lot of room for it to be done, but there are you know dangerous points in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I think we have like we have like literally 10, 20 seconds left. But um, may, does anyone envision augmented reality at some point where we can you know walk through <laughs> walk through our family tree um, with Google glasses on or something like that? I don't know. It's hard to imagine what the future. Is. Okay, Shemek, Lesh, anything? <laughs> I think like like in 10, 15 years, genealogy will be a solved problem. Like <laughs> <laughs> wow. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, well, you heard it here first, folks. 15 years, it'll be all solved and it'll be all amazing. But no matter what happens, in 15 years, Wikitree will still be going and we'll still have amazing people working together on it. And um, thank you for the team that's uh, assembled here in front of you and those behind the scenes, those we've mentioned, everyone who took part in Oktoberfest, all our, our uh, viewers who are uh, testing and trying out new things. And uh, maybe you've learned a, a few new things that are available to you now and you can uh, go and explore those. Um, so thank you for coming to see this presentation on Wikitree Day. Um, and this presentation, along with all the presentations from Wikitree, the Wikitree Symposium day yesterday, um, all of those will be available for 30 days. Um, I believe the Wikitree day ones are probably going to stick around longer than that. Um, Chris, I don't know if you know the answer to that one, but um, certainly the so, symposium ones are around for 30 days. And um, so with all that, I'd like to say uh, thank you very much and have enjoy the rest of Wikitree day. Um, uh, I've got a presentation at four if you want to come join me for an appetizing tour uh, where I will actually reveal a brand new app that hasn't made it into the dynamic tree view yet. But as soon as I'm done that, I'll put a pull request so Brian can edit. <laughs> and um, thank you again and have a great day. And let me just thank you. Bye, thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.